Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Gongora and in this video I will show you an experiment that not only will provide you with insights on hysteresis but will also show you how to use some cool tools when working on your analog electronics projects. Why hysteresis? Because it's a concept that goes beyond electronics. It describes the behavior of systems in plenty of fields such as mechanics, engineering, biology, economics, and so on. So it seems to be a pretty important concept. Remember that hysteresis is produced by positive feedback to avoid unwanted rapid switching. Hysteresis is just the dependence of a system not only on its current environment, but also on its past environment. In order to do that, we will begin our discussion by describing the idea of the project step by step. Next, we will go into the details of the design using some of the knowledge we recently acquired in 6002X. And finally, we will see a demo of the system. Let's begin. As stated before, this project seek to develop an on-off temperature controller. Concretely, we will try to control the temperature around a light bulb. The first thing we need to do is to somehow measure this temperature. In that proposed, we will use a LM35. The only thing we need to know is that the output voltage of this device is linearly proportional to the Celsius temperature, with a scale factor of 10 mV per centigrade. We also need a set point voltage that will define the temperature at which the system should be stable. This is the expected behavior. As long as the temperature is below the set point, we want the light bulb to be on. When the temperature reaches the set point or surpasses the set point, the light bulb should be off. So we need to produce a control signal as depicted below. But how can we control the state of the light bulb, given that it works with 220 volts AC? We need some kind of switch that closes the light bulb circuit when we apply some DC voltage on it. Fortunately, this switch exists and is called relay. In order to drive the relay, we need a transistor to amplify the current from the output of the op-amp. By using the op-amp as a comparator, despite its dependence on the gain and the problems that arise from it, we will obtain the control signal that we need. Finally, we decided to use a buffer or voltage follower to isolate the relay circuit from the op-amp that produces the control signal. And that's it. We have a fully functional on-off controller as long as we are capable of producing an appropriate set point voltage. We could use a potentiometer, but the thing is that we need to produce and adjust a signal in millivolts, so we decided to use a precision potentiometer. At the end of this presentation, you will find a link to a web page with a description of this circuit. Now, what about hysteresis? What if I don't have that many potentiometers? No problem. In the hysteresis case, we will use a set of resistors to define the set point and to feed back a portion of the output signal into the positive terminal of the op-amp. Notice that to produce hysteresis, we are not using the same arrangement of resistors that we saw in the lectures. That's because we are using a single supply op-amp instead of a double supply as we did in 6002X. Concretely, we will use a LM358. This is the final schematic and this is the prototype built on a breadboard. Let's begin our design with the circuit proposed in the components datasheet, where VREF 
and V in are the set point and sensor voltages respectively. Don't forget that we are using positive feedback in order to saturate the output of the op-amp as we saw in the lectures. So when V0 is equal to zero, the voltage at the positive terminal of the op-amp is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times V rev. When V0 is equal to VOH, we can use superposition to find out the expression of the voltage V plus. By doing so, we get the expression in the red box. Subtracting equation 1 from equation 2, we get H equal R1 over R1 plus R2 times VOH. Now, if we establish the lower limit as 300 millivolt, which is equivalent to 30 degrees Celsius, and the upper limit as 350 millivolt, which is equivalent to 35 degrees Celsius, H is equal to 50 millivolt. And from there, we can find an expression that relates R1 and R2. Using that expression and choosing R2 to be 33 kilo ohms, R1 becomes 333 times 333 ohms. Now, remember that we are going to use a couple of resistors to produce VREF. We need to find the values of RA and RB from R1 and VREF. Solving these two equations, we get the analytical values of RA and RB. But the thing is that you won't find resistors of such values. We need to use real resistors whose values are close to the analytical ones. Notice that R2 equals RC. The last thing to do is to compute the error we introduced by using real resistors. The original values are represented in green so that you can see there is no big difference. Before we move on to the demo, let me show you another breadboard you will see in the video. This is a Pinguino an Arduino-like board. We are using the Pinguino in order to send some voltages of the breadboard to the computer using the USB port. You will also see in the, in the demo a little window that shows the current temperature and the setpoint value. This graphical user interface was developed using processing. At the end of the video, you will find the links to the home pages of all these projects. Ja, das ist doch.